Hey guys, it's Justin back with an engineer's perspective. And I'm gonna try to do a quick video on um, gear that I recommend if you are going to be involved in a turnaround or basically what would be a major plant shutdown that lasts for an extended, uh, extended period of time. Usually with the purpose of both installing new things but also doing um, routine maintenance and cleaning and uh, inspections on equipment. Um, so in my young career I've seen the start and end of two turnarounds and then I'm currently as we speak in week two of the third turnaround. The first two being in the sugar industry and this current one being in oil and gas at a gas processing plant. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of go through the the gear that that I that I personally have found very useful and that I recommend for any any of you engineers out there or you know people that work at a plant. So I'm just gonna kind of dig right in. Well, I guess I'll start with the clothing first off. Um, depending on where you work, but almost certainly you're gonna have to have long pants. I'm just in athletic shorts right now, so. I'm not going to model it for you, but jeans or a good pair of car hearts or something. If you're in oil and gas, they have to be fire rated. So make sure you have the proper clothing um, in terms of that. Um, upper body, when you're just walking around, if at all possible, usually a t-shirt is good just to stay cool. But if you're once again in oil and gas, you have to have long sleeves. Um, and... Uh, so that's kind of required, but I recommend keeping some sort of long sleeves around, even if you're not required to for vessel entries, you really want to protect your, your arms uh, going in and out of manways. So if, if it's the summertime, have some sort of thin long sleeves, even if you're not required to wear them for, the, for that purpose, um, just to protect your arms when you're going to do that. Um, underwear. Use good underwear, you're gonna be walking around a lot, you're probably gonna be sweaty. Get some good quality underwear or like some compression uh, shorts type of thing. So that's important. Also important are good socks. So just, just buy good socks, some Nike dry fits, whatever. Um, On to boots. I personally recommend something of this style. So these are just a pair of Keens that I've had for a few years. Um, they have a hole horn in them down here, so they leak. But whenever you shut down a plant, odds are there's going to be cleaning, and where there's cleaning, there's water. So I recommend waterproof and just making sure you air them out every night. Um, so waterproof, uh, six inch ankle is definitely recommended. Sometimes you'll get walking through some nasty. Uh, sets of spool pieces and valves that are laying on the ground and I've saved my ankles multiple times by having the taller ankle here and I believe in the ankle support as well so something that has laces or an alternative so to replace these ones because they're leaking I've got these red wing king toes here and they've got the boa which is kind of nifty and is new to me so I just you tighten it down like that pop it out to loosen it so that's something I'm trying out, but you know, once again, waterproof, six inch, when you tighten that down, it's got good ankle support. Um, obviously have to be hard toe. Both of these are composite toe, so not steel. Makes them a lot lighter, and then when things start to get colder, they keep your toes warmer because they're not conducting as much heat. So I really recommend the composite toe if you can find it. Um, Something that the Keens do well that the Red Wings don't is I really recommend also a covered toe cap like that because this is a very high wear spot. Um, you can bring your boots in to like a Red Wing or some stores and they'll put one on for you. So I just wait until it wears out and then do that. And then you always want to have a protected rear seam. It's like on the Red Wings they have the, this piece of leather over that rear seam. So boots, very important. I put those down. All right, so I'm gonna make you wait until the fun stuff, you know, so I'm gonna keep going. Um, just got my hard hat full of crap here. 
lock for lockout tag out. That's going to be provided by your um, employer. Tape measure. Um, it depends on what you're measuring. This is bigger than I prefer, but it is nice to have the 25 foot. And what's really nice is getting a good one like this Milwaukee is a lot of times you'll be measuring across a span. So it needs to be able to hold itself up for a good distance. So tape measure, oil and gas, you need a H2S monitor. In there. Uh, a pair of gloves. I don't recommend a really nice pair like the Mechanics because they're probably going to get dirty and ruined. So just more of a generic pair of gloves. I actually don't tend not to like this, so a lot of times I'll cut that off. But just a good pair of leather gloves with a little bit of dexterity, but you really want something that's going to keep your hands from getting cut on sharp steel. So I don't, I don't recommend the Mechanics for turnaround work. Safety glasses, if you're inside clear, if you're outside, then consider um, tinted, but really they should be clear in my opinion. It's just easier to see. Hard hat, that's pretty standard. You can get a, a light on your hard hat if you like. It makes it very heavy, and this has a very rubbery band, but you can always zip tie it through the holes down there to keep it down. I only use these for vessel entries. So if I'm going in something, I bring this too. Otherwise I prefer a separate light like this one here. So this one's intrinsically safe. So oil and gas, you have to use this one. Otherwise I prefer this here, which is the Streamlight Polytac uh, HP. So I like this one because it has a very warm hot spot, which is actually tighter than it looks. It's in reality, it's about four inch or four square inches the hot spot at this distance. It's very good for pointing. It has very long throw. So it's easy to walk around with somebody and be like that thing there and that thing there and there. So some sort of light with a good tight hot spot. Um, if you can get one with magnetic capability, that's really slick. So you put on the side of a vessel and read. So this is like a nightstick. It's not super bright but the magnets are really slick on there and you've kind of got this lamp feature that's nice. So those things, I recommend a watch. Things are gonna be happening a lot so it's important to stay on time. Just a digital Timex or a Casio watch is recommended. All of mine are dead or need new batteries so I've actually been wearing this guy, Timex Weekender. This thing's been through hell and high water and it survived, so I figured what the heck, it's been doing great. Um, all right, on to some really, probably the most important thing. So now we're getting on to the, the real fun gear. So for me, the most important thing I carry other than a cell phone is gonna be that, a notepad. Keeping good notes is really important and it can keep you on track. And in order to keep good notes, you need a good pen, and I really recommend the Fisher uh, bullet pen for this. Get one that has the clip though. Oops. Um, and that's because when these notepads start getting dirty, um, the gel pens tend to really struggle. So if you're going in and out of a lot of vessels or in dusty environments, the Fisher bullet pen does the best writing. So I really recommend that. This is a write in the rain pad. Honestly, I could take it or leave it. I think I've been trying out the right in the rain. I prefer a normal pad, just a normal paper pad. So I don't recommend the right in the rain, but your mileage may vary. But definitely the Fisher bullet pen. So this is like the most important combo right here. Um, what would be next? Well, next is I always carry a multi-tool. So I'm gonna bring in some options here. So at my previous employer, I would have been carrying something like the Surge. Um, mostly for this tool set right here. This one for opening junction boxes. This one for doing controls wiring. And then the bit exchanger for fun things that you find on electronics. And then just being generally he heavy duty. Firehead to check for loose bolts and then a file for if something's corroded, you can you know, scrape it and see is that 
you know, what, what's under there or if it's covered in scale or something, something to scrape with like that and to file with, so the file. So it used to be the surge for me, but in the current environment I'm in, it's pretty fast paced, especially with the uh, vessel entries. And when you, ent you enter a vessel, you're gonna have a harness on. And uh, well, when you're going in there, you really wanna minimize your cross section when you're trying to sneak through a skinny manway that's bigger or you know smaller than your shoulders even. So I went with the wave to start because it's smaller, right? It's just a smaller overall package. And you, I recommend the, the heritage sheaths because they're a little bit tighter than this yet. For So all the reasons of the surge, but it just doesn't have the internal tools that I like. So what I did today is I did a little modification on the free series here um, to kind of make it more to my liking. So if you take a look, that's my ruler. It's quite a bit shorter than it used to be. So I actually cut it off so that it would be the same size as the one on the Surge, the big one. So that's much better for junction boxes. It's a little bit thicker than this as it's tapered down. So now I can open up junction boxes. Don't have to do that. And then the other one I modified is this one. So you need the small flat head for controls, control wiring, but the one that comes on the free, it's actually a little bit too wide at the tip, so you can't get quite in the recess. So all I did was just thinned it out from here to here and from here to here. So it should be able to fit in there now, um, like the Surge does. So I modified that one. You still have the file, it's crappy, but honestly it doesn't take much just to kind of scrape it and see what you're doing. Um, I'm leaving the all for that little one, especially like your safety glasses adjusting them because that's small enough to get in there. And then this isn't for um, engineering or anything, but this tool, I put a 25 or is it a 30 degree sharpened edge on there so now it digs right into wood and i can actually use it as like a large awl to make a big hole and then you know because i like gouge things out it's very sharp now so i modified those also modified the scissors they were much fatter towards the tip and i made them much finer i actually just gave my three week old son a bath they had very soft nails afterward but they were jacked up they get long and nasty and i trimmed them with these scissors here and i like those finer points so you got the good robust pliers for one checking bolts just to make sure they're tightened down and two if you've got some slop in the bottom of the tank or some parts of internals fell down into there, you can pick them up like that. You don't have to get your gloves ruined, basically. So I like having pliers to be able to grab that up out of there. So after modifications, this is my new engineer's uh, uh, multi-tool. So, oh, and why, why did I want the free? Why did I do it to the free? Well, because like I was saying, when you're going through manways, you really want to minimize your cross section and you've got this on your belt sticking out and then you've got a harness on that's usually you've got, you know, it's kind of like pushing it up here and you're trying to bend. Belt sheets are a pain in the butt. So of course you could pocket clip the wave, but the free is thinner yet and uh, after modification, the free has a better tool set than the wave does for what I need, which is really specifically these two implements are biggies. And I don't have to carry around a bit set. So I'm already carrying around enough crap. So yeah, that is my engineer's loadout for uh, turnarounds. And what I've also been carrying is my midnight manager.
it's my backup pen and backup light. So sometimes I forget to bring um, a pen with me and that's kind of a big deal <laughs> when you're sitting out there. It's a huge pain in the tuchus. So keep a, a backup pen and I rarely forget a light and technically I'm not allowed to have this one because it's not intrinsically safe, but neither is my cell phone. And that's only okay because the plants shut down, but got that for the pen and the light really. Oh, and the last thing I was gonna mention, it's a good idea to carry around a Sharpie or a paint pen or something, because a lot of times you'll wanna write on, on a vessel or something or mark something, you know, cut here or don't cut here, things like that. So something to write on things that a pen won't do. So that's kind of it. That's, that's my loadout. I'll drag it all back out here. Take these out, take that out. Pile it up for you. It's not that light. And then the clothing and the boots. So there you go. That's all the crap I carry. But it helps a lot and uh, you, it helps you in a fast paced environment and you're always ready for everything. So there you go. That's all I've got. Have a good one. Bye.